So, I think it's time we head back down to that terrifying deep blue sea. All right, I got a video for y'all. Check this one out. This discovery underwater scares scientists. All right, so we're gonna check it out. If you're new, hit that subscribe button. Here we go. Deep sea diving is a seriously extreme sport. It might not be fast moving, but there are a lot of things down in the depths that are truly terrifying. In fact, it is just the knowledge. Did that skeleton still have a hat on? It's crazy. I know that wasn't hair. <laughs> that it's the unknown that's the scariest thing. Well, that and the Kraken, of course. From the underwater party with plenty of class to the greatest shipwreck discovery ever, here's the 20 strangest things found by deep sea divers. <sighs> Number 20. 168 bottles of bubbly 170 years old. Wow. Every wine enthusiast understands the value of an aged wine, but few get the opportunity to taste a 170 year old champagne from the seafloor. Divers discovered 168 bottles of champagne while excavating a shipwreck off the Finnish Aland Archipelago in the Baltic Sea in 2010. They discovered the wine was possibly more than a century old when they drank it. But how the heck was it still good to drink? What's going on down there? This discovery underwater scares scientists. A chemical explanation of the old libation revealed a lot about how this 19th century wine was made. After 170 years of deep sea aging in close to perfect conditions, these sleeping champagne bottles awoke to tell us a chapter of the story of winemaking, the researcher said in the study. The researchers investigated the chemical makeup of the wine from the shipwreck and compared it to that of current champagne in the study, which was directed by f I'd be scared to drink that, bro. <laughs> you might not wake up for like two, three days. That type of drunk. Philip Jean Day, a professor of food biochemistry at the University of Reims, Champagne Ardennes in France. According to the experts, engravings on the section of cork that touches the wine indicate that it was created by the French champagne firms Vive Clucot, Ponsardin, Heidsieck, and Houglard. A chemical examination of the wine found that it was far sweeter than current champagnes. The sugar level of the 170 year old wine was around 20 ounces per gallon, but today's champagne Champagnes have only approximately 0.8 ounces to 1 ounce per gallon. According to the experts, the high sugar level was typical of people's tastes at the period. Before we go on, like this video, smash that subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or the centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. <laughs> Number 19. Shipwreck Holy Grail. Two ships found near Spanish galleon, full of gold worth 17 billion. Two undiscovered marine wrecks discovered recently near the historic Spanish galleon were filled. Bro, it's, it's got me thinking like, how many more? I, I shouldn't even say how many more. Like, I know it's a lot out there. It's a lot more shipwrecks out there, bro. Filled with gold worth 17 billion. The 62 gun Ooh. San Jose was a three masted galleon that was sunk by the British in 1708 during the War of Spanish Succession with 600 persons on board. It was discovered in 2015 and is packed with gold and treasures worth billions of dollars. The Colombian authorities just got video evidence of high tech equipment being lowered to the bottom where a cannon can be seen. Other items, such as numerous clay Damn. pots can also be observed strewn across the beach in it yeah with that much stuff on that i'd have a cannon on there too <laughs> you, you think i wouldn't addition despite aquatic life's attempts to take over the bow of one of the vessels looks to be exceptionally well preserved images acquired by a remote controlled vehicle show the vessel sitting on the bottom not yet eaten up by the sand a closer examination near the cannons reveals a significant number of artifacts including teacups and other things lying on the bottom ready to be studied in addition to the galleon's emblem and the cannon Artifacts unearthed at the San Jose shipwreck included coins called macuquinas, which were produced by hand at the time, a gold ignot, and the crew's weapons. Number 18. Wreck of a 340-year-old sunken Royal Navy warship discovered off Norfolk coast. 
A British vessel that sank off the coast of eastern England in 1682 while transporting a future king has been discovered. In what has been termed as the most significant historic maritime discovery since the raising of the Mary Rose in 1982. The declaration comes after 15 years of secret work to preserve the wreck. After a four year search. Why did I look at that? Y'all gonna say something wrong with me. Watch this, y'all. The declaration comes after 15 years of. Why did I look at that and think in my head like, oh man, they had iPod, uh, AirPods back then. <laughs> it's something seriously wrong with me. Oh man. Oh bro, I know good and well they ain't have no AirPods, but don't that look like one? My bad, y'all, my bad. Secret work to preserve the wreck. After a four year search of the Norfolk shore, brothers Julian and Lincoln Barnwell and friend James Little discovered the ship half buried on the seabed in 2007. On May 6, 1682, the Royal Navy ship carrying the future King of England, James Stewart, the then Duke of York, went aground on a sandbank. It sank mm. after a battle for control of the ship's course as it crossed the dangerous Norfolk sandbanks between the future King James. James II of England, a former Lord High Admiral, and the pilot. Claire Joey, a nautical history expert at the University of East Anglia, highlighted that the age and reputation of the ship, the state of the wreck, the items previously retrieved, and the political background of the tragedy all confirmed to the significance of the find. The Mary Rose, one of Henry VIII's warships that went down in 1545, was recovered in 1982 in a feat of maritime archaeology that revealed a wealth of information about Tudor life. A third of the wooden cruiser, which was nearly submerged beneath the seafloor, had survived, with the viable pieces eroding away. Among the things recovered from aboard the Mary Rose were wooden cannon cartridges, cooking pots, scalpels, leather book covers, syringes, fiddles, whistles, weaponry, navigation systems, and furniture, giving historians the biggest collection of genuine Tudor antiques ever assembled. Number 17. The famous ship Endurance, which sank during a 1915 Antarctic expedition, was discovered more than a century later. Scientists have discovered and videotaped one of the largest unknown shipwrecks in history, 107 years after it went down. The Endurance, the lost vessel of Antarctic explorer Sir Ernst Shackleton, was discovered at the bottom of the Weddell Sea. In 1915, the ship was smashed by sea ice and sunk, forcing Shackleton and his men to attempt an incredible escape on foot and in tiny boats. Endurance appears to be in excellent shape in video footage of the remnants. Even after resting in three kilometers of water for almost a century, it still appears the same as the day it went down in November. The timbers are still very much in Yeah, I think that's probably one of the best preserved ones I've seen. Intact, and the name, Endurance, is clearly visible on the stern. The Falkland Marine Time Heritage Trust spearheaded the search for the missing ship, employing a South African icebreaker, Aglas II, outfitted with remotely controlled submersibles. The seasoned polar geographer Dr. John Shears, who led the operation, described the moment cameras landed on the ship's name as jaw-dropping. The wreck itself is declared a monument under the Antarctic Treaty and must not be damaged in any way. As a result, no artifacts have been brought to the surface. The ship seems much as it did when Shackleton's photographer, Frank Hurley, captured it for the last time in 1915. The masts are down, the rope is tangled, but the hull is mostly intact. Some damage is seen at the bow, which is most likely where the descending ship collided with the seafloor. The anchors are present. The subs also discovered some footwear and tableware. Number 16. The world's oldest intact shipwreck has been discovered in the Black Sea. Archaeologists think they have discovered the world's oldest undamaged shipwreck at the bottom of the Black Sea, where it appears to have been undisturbed for almost 2,400 years. The 75-foot ship, assumed to be ancient Greek, was discovered with its mast, rudders, and rowing benches intact, just over a mile below the surface. According to experts, the absence of oxygen that deep down preserved it. The ship is thought to have been a commerce vessel of some sort, previously only seen 
seen on the side of ancient Greek pottery, such as the Siren Vase in the British Museum, according to academics. That piece, from around the same time period, portrays a similar ship carrying Odysseus past the Sirens, with a Hemoeric hero chained to the mast to resist their cries. The crew allegedly stated that they planned to leave the ship where it was discovered, but that a little piece had been carbon dated by the University of Southampton, and that the results confirmed it's the oldest intact shipwreck known to mankind. Number 15. Yellow Brick Road a fascinating rock formation unearthed recently that resembles the fictitious Yellow Brick Road in The Wizard of Oz has been called the Road to Atlantis. Deep sea researchers have undercovered the underwater road off the coast of Hawaii on the Pacific Ocean floor. They were looking for undersea formations known as seamounts, which are formed by volcanic activity. The exploration vessel Nautilus team spotted an unusual feature while investigating in an area of the Pacific Ocean called Liliuokalani Ridge according to a video released by E.V. Narlis on YouTube. It is part of the Papa Nau Mokuakea Marine National Museum in the United States. The researchers were shown meeting a formation that seemed to be a man-made brick road with amazing rectangular bricks while live-streaming their findings. They joked that the golden brick walkway they discovered at the bottom of the Pacific Ocean may be the Road to Atlantis, a fictitious imp- I had a question. And we may have, they may have answered it, but I just can't remember. My memory ain't the best, but seeing that uh, robot just then pick up that rock, turn it and do different things, got me to thinking, I wonder, have they ever found like well-preserved like eggs down there? Because if dinosaurs once ruled the earth, right? And they roamed the earth and some of them were aquatic, would there be, or would a lot of them lay, like, like not all of them would lay on ant land, right? I don't know, maybe not a possibility or maybe it's not, but it's just a thought. It was just a thought. Maybe a dumb thought, maybe not a dumb thought, but it was a thought nonetheless. I don't know, that just popped into my mind seeing that robot do that. I was like, oh, I wonder if they ever possibly, you know what I mean? Cause I don't know, maybe, I don't know, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm, I'm tripping, my bad y'all. <laughs> Imperial Superpower Island, referenced by Plato. When the team saw the structure, a researcher on the radio declared that it was the road to Atlantis. Another scientist answered by wondering whether they meant the Yellow Brick Road. Although it seems to be a golden brick road leading to the fictitious city of Atlantis, it's actually an example of ancient active volcano geology. They also stated that the cobblestone-like pattern of cracks in the rock is most likely the product of repeated heating and cooling, caused by innumerable volcanic eruptions throughout time. Number 14. Diving YouTubers have found remains of 16 missing people. Whoa. Jared Lasik, an Oregon-based scuba diver, began cleaning up local rivers in 2018 and broadcasting recordings of his underwater experiences to his YouTube channel, Adventures with Purpose. When the crew started rescuing submerged automobiles, relatives of missing persons became interested. Bob Goff of Montana had been looking for his wife Tammy for over three years when he contacted the organization for assistance in searching for her truck in the river where Tammy's dog was discovered immediately after she went missing. It must be traumatic to view those dead bodies. Right Yet they do it not for their personal benefit, but for the benefit. Dang, they finding cell phones and all, bro. Like, salute to that guy who's who's doing that, bro, because he's gonna find a lot of different things. Maybe able to help some cold cases as well. Of others, they are deserving of far more than a brief mention on YouTube. Facts. These guys are some real heroes. Scuba diving is a type of underwater diving in which divers employ breathing equipment that is totally self contained and not dependent on a surface air supply. Christian J. Lambertston invented the term scuba, an abbreviation for a self contained underwater breathing apparatus, in a 1952 patent. Scuba divers carry their own breathing gas, commonly compressed air, which gives them more independence and movement than surface supply divers, and longer time underwater than free divers. Scuba diving can be done recreationally or professionally in a variety of settings, such as scientific, military, and public safety responsibilities. However, most commercial diving employs surface supply diving equipment when possible. Scuba divers who participate in clandestine armed forces operations are known as frogmen, combat divers, or assault swimmers. 
Number 13. Only thing would make me a little hesitant about that is just being in some of those lakes and alligators possibly or whatever is up under there. You know what I mean? Other than that, shout outs to them dudes, man. That's phenomenal. Number 12. German World War I submarine found with 23 bodies inside. Authorities announced that an undamaged German World War I submarine carrying the corpses of 23 people was discovered off the coast of Belgium. The find on the North Sea surface, according to West Flanders Governor Carl Ducalue, is very unique. It's quite amazing that we found something like this, Ducalue added. The impact damage was in the front, but the submarine is still closed and there are 23 people on board. The discovered UB-2 type driving boat is 88 feet long and nearly 20 feet wide, sitting at a 45 degree angle between 82 to 98 feet below the surface. The damage to the front of the vessel suggests that the sub's top deck may have collided with a mine. Although two torpedo tubes have been damaged, the lowest tube remains intact and closed. The submarine is coated with barnacles and algae. It's also ornamented with fishing equipment, such as nets. Researchers discovered the U-boat, according to Dukalue. He refused to reveal its exact position until the place had been secured. He phoned Germany's ambassador because we need to see what we can do with the remains. Between 1915 and 1918, the Flanders Flotilla stationed 18 U-boats at Bruges. 13 of them were annihilated. It's the 11th similar wreck discovered in Belgian waters. German submarines launched from Bruges, close across the English Channel, were easy prey for Allied warships and cargo ships. Number 11. Pristine Coral Reef Discovered Off the Coast of Tahiti Scientists have uncovered a nearly two mile long coral reef off the coast of Tahiti that appears to be unaffected by climate change or human activity. According to UNESCO, the discovered reef well, that's about to change now that we know it's there is one of the biggest healthy reefs on record, with rose-shaped coral as far as the eye can see. During a UNESCO-supported dive expedition in November, a team of scientists and photographers spent 200 hours studying the huge reef. They measured corals with diameters of more than six feet and watched coral spawning. Most coral reefs known to researchers are found at depths of up to 82 feet. The reef off the French Polynesian coast, on the other hand, is deeper at 100 to 210 feet, below shallow, well-lit seas and the deep ocean. The mesophotic zone is the lowest point in the ocean where sunlight can enter. Scientists believe that the reef's depths may safeguard it from the consequences of human activity. Coral bleaching is a threat to coral reefs across the world, making them prone to disease and death. Corals are saltwater invertebrates that feed on tiny algae, called zooxanthellae, that live in their tissues. However, when stressed by changes in water temperature, pollution, too much sunshine, or low tides, the algae disappears and the coral becomes white. Climate change is the principal cause of coral bleaching. The coral's depth may have protected it, but it also made it impossible for scientists to analyze, measure, and collect samples. According to NOAA, researchers have only lately been able to examine mesophotic coral habitats due to technological developments. Number 10. New investigation reveals 12,000-year-old skeleton in Mexican cave. For 12,000 years, the bones of an unfortunate girl named Naia were kept in the depths of an underground cave in Mexico, preserving evidence to the origins of the first Americans. Her bones, and those clues, have finally been discovered, in the form of Naia's skull and the DNA in her bones. <laughs> that led experts to believe that there was just one large migration to the Americas via an old land bridge that today spans the Bering Strait. Yamane Asmarong, a geochemist at the University of New Mexico, who helped estimate how long Naya lived, compared her narrative to Lucy, a 3.2 million year old human progenitor whose bones were discovered in Ethiopia 40 years ago. The significance of Naya arises from the fact that her bones were so well preserved in the cold dark waters of Hoyo Negro, a massive 100 foot deep grotto in Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula. 
For decades, anthropologists have filled out the theory that modern-day Native Americans are the descendants of ancient peoples that crossed the Beringia land bridge from Siberia to the Americas. However, scientists have been perplexed by skeletal remains that appear to have originated in Africa or the South Pacific rather than Siberia or the Americas. Mm. To estimate the age of the remains, many procedures were applied, including radiocarbon dating of dental enamel and uranium thorium dating of crystals that developed on the bones. These techniques suggested that Naya was between 12,000 and 13,000 years old. Wow. Number 9. Divers find a skeleton tea party in an Arizona lake. A diver discovered a bizarre pair of skeletons having a tea party at the bottom of a riverbank recently and contacted- Yo, people play too much. You know somebody put that down there. A random, just random skeleton tea party? Yeah, man, y'all play too much, bro. <laughs> y'all got nothing, y'all got way too much time on your hands. Acted authorities. What was even weirder was that they were lying on chairs surrounded by rocks. There were no shipwreck dive sites nearby to provide clues as to what the diver had seen. Many people wanted to figure out how the skeletons got there, as word of the mystery find traveled around the world. And the skeletons are intact and sitting in a chair. Yeah, come on, man. You know somebody did that. After hearing the news, a husband and wife revealed that the bones in the Colorado River at the Arizona-California border were placed there as a private joke, and that mm -hmm. the skeletons are fakes. The L.A. Paz County Sheriff's- I mean, come on, one of them got glasses and a hat cocked to the side. Stop it, bro. <laughs> Department and the Buckskin Fire Department were dispatched to inspect the bones, which were discovered 40 feet beneath the water. When they went down, it was a little scary at first, L.A. Paz County Sheriff's Office Lieutenant Kurt Bagby told local journalists. The two skeletons were discovered to be fakes and were given the names Bernie and Bernadette. The pair sat on deck chairs on the riverbank, clad in swimsuit, with Bernie holding a can of beer. The Phoenix couple has now taken responsibility for placing the models. The pair claimed they left the skeletons as a joke with another diver. Number 8. A rare Megamouth shark captured. Megamouth. Fishermen have captured an extremely uncommon Megamouth shark. The animal was discovered in fishing nets about five kilometers from Owasa. Yeah, I don't think I've ever heard of that before. Megamouth? Mm-mm. Park. And like a knockoff Megalodon, but... The Mie Prefecture, Central Japan. The five meter shark weighed over a ton and was purchased by a Japanese fishmonger. Only 60 specimens have been observed Ooh. since they were discovered in 1976. The shark swims with its mouth open, catching plankton and other food. Megamouth sharks swim at a depth of 120 to 160 meters during the day and up to 12 meters at night. They were discovered off the coast of Hawaii after becoming entangled in the anchor of a U.S. Navy ship. Typically, the species is found around Japan, the Philippines, and Taiwan. Only 99 Megamouth species had been captured or spotted as of March 5, 2018. They've been discovered in the Pacific, Atlantic, and Indian Oceans. Japan, the Philippines, and Taiwan have each produced at least 10 specimens, the most in any one region, and accounting for more than half of the global total. Specimens have also been spotted near Hawaii, California, Mexico, Indonesia, Australia, Brazil, Senegal, South Africa, Puerto Rico, Ecuador, and maybe Vietnam. Number 7. Extinct sloth fossils discovered in underwater cave. After discovering its fossilized bones at the bottom of a sinkhole, Mexican scientists revealed a new giant sloth species that existed around 12,000 years ago. Archaeologists have collected some of the bones lying around 165 to 180 feet below the water-filled pit, including the head and jaw, some vertebrae, ribs, and claws, as well as a few lengthy bones, according to the National Institute of Anthropology and History, or INAH for short. Others, though, are still down there. The crew is hoping to bring them to the surface soon. The scientists called the extinct sloth Zeobalba onyx oviceps, after the cave-related Mayan underworld Zeobalba, the Greek term for claws onyx, because of that protective trait shared by sloths, and the Latin word ovum, to allude to its egg-shaped cranium. 
More bones will provide scientists with more information about Yo. what the gigantic sloth was like while it was alive, including its size. But the INH has revealed that this specific animal lived between 10,647 BCE and 10,305 BCE for the time being. The sinkhole, known as a cenote in Mexico, where the gigantic sloth was discovered, is located in the state of Quintana Roo on the Yucatan Peninsula and Mexico's southeastern region. That state is well known for the resort city of Cancun and its extensive network of underwater caverns. Number 6. Enormous Underwater Fossil Graveyard Anthropologists and paleontologists financed by the National Science Foundation discovered what might be the biggest single collection of lemur bones ever discovered. Furthermore, scientists discovered it in an odd location, a system of underwater caverns in a desolate desert part of Madagascar. Bro, that's a lot. Madagascar. The finding of hundreds of potentially thousands of year old remains, described as a lemur graveyard, makes it one of the world's most unusual places. The discovery, as revealed in this video, might be significant for comprehending human relatives and other creatures, ushering in a completely new age of undersea paleontology. Since their arrival in Madagascar, lemurs have evolved to occupy a variety of open ecological niches. Their diversity in behavior and morphology rivals that of other species of monkeys and apes. Lemurs evolve diverse forms of locomotion, Varying levels of. I, I wish they show a picture. With, I'm, try, I'm racking my brain to try to remember what an actual lemur looked like. So I wish they would show like a picture of one so I could get it like stop trying to sift through files in my brain because there's a lot of files in there. You know what I'm saying? Gosh, would they just show a picture? Sheesh. Of social complexity and unique adaptations to the local climate, ranging in size from the world's smallest primate, the 30 gram Madame Berth's mouse lemur, to the recently extinct 160 to 200 kilogram Archaeoindris fontoyonant. Number 5 Maya artifacts found in world's largest underground cave. In the field of underwater cave research, the most significant discoveries are sometimes made in the smallest of places. For example, a diver researching flooded tunnels near the beach resort of Tulum in Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula swam down a narrow tube bare- They done mentioned two places I want to go to. Cancun, I've never been, and Tulum, I've never been. Barely big enough for a human, only a foot and a half high and three feet wide. In doing so, he discovered a long sought link between the Sacaton cave system and the Dos Ojos system, indicating that the two were really one. At 216 miles, they comprise the world's longest underwater cave system. Mm -hmm. However, archaeologist Guillermo de Anda believes that the discovery of the tight tube is just the beginning of astounding discoveries within the system now known as the Sac a Tube. The extensive network of caves is not only a natural beauty, but also a time capsule dating back to the previous Ice Age. Deonda's team discovered approximately 200 archaeological sites while investigating the caverns, including Maya altars, ancient human bones, and extinct animal fossils. They even discovered the bones of a previously unknown person. While the majority of the archaeological material discovered so far in the cave system is Maya, the researchers have also discovered artifacts from a far older period. Water levels were at least 330 feet lower during the previous ice age, and the caverns were not constantly flooded. Water seeping into the Sacatoon system throughout time protected the bones of ancient species, such as the gigantic sloth and Gonferteria, thought to be elephant relatives. Number 4. <laughs> Egyptian Artifacts Buried Underwater on Display in Paris An exhibition in Paris features artifacts from ancient Egyptian settlements that have been preserved for thousands of years Whoa. below the bottom of the Mediterranean Sea. The show at the Arab World Institute in Paris includes 250 relics from two ancient towns found 15 years ago. The items were recovered from a 40 square mile stretch of the Mediterranean Sea near Alexandria, Egypt, after seven years of underwater excavation. The artifacts, which are partially shielded by the water and are coated with silt, date back 2,800 years. Archaeologists Ooh. believe the settlements ended up at the bottom of the sea following years of natural calamities such as earthquakes and landslides. Thonis, Heraklion, 
and Canopus were the ancient cities, and many of the objects are thought to be offerings to the ancient Egyptian deity Osiris. The exhibition comes at a critical juncture for Middle Eastern antiquities, as fighters from the Islamic State, or ISIS, have destroyed artifacts across Iraq and Syria. Number 3. Giant Sea Worm Giant luminous sea worms? Sounds pretty cool. Hmm. These, however, are not worms. They're called pyrosomes. Pyros I don't care what you say, what you tell me it ain't, <laughs> what it isn't. If I see that in the, in the water, <laughs> yeah. I don't care that I've already seen it on a video. If you run into that, that's going to scare the mess out of you in the water, bro. You're going to think it's a worm or something else. Pyrosomes are free-floating tunicates found towards the top of the water column in tropical oceans. These pyrosomes, dubbed unicorns of the sea, as delicate as a feather boa, are another reminder of how strange the ocean can be. Each pyrosome Very. is a colony of thousands of individual zooids, barely a few millimeters in size. Zooids clone themselves, adding to and lengthening the total pyrosome. Because of this cloning process, the larger the pyrosome, the older it is. Some can grow to be the size of a small whale, while others are only a centimeter long. They exhibit incredible bioluminescent qualities that are claimed to be far more powerful and persistent than those of other bioluminescent species. However, it is unknown how tough they are, as a penguin was once discovered trapped inside one after swimming in through the open end and becoming lodged inside. Sounds kind of scary to me. Number 2. Eel Garden Wow. The name Eel Gardens comes from the many eels that cover the seafloor not far from the dive starting point. After crossing the reef plate to the entry point, which is a 9 meter canyon, it broadens into a vast sandy region that gently slopes down. After diving along the protruding reef perpendicular to the main reef, the eels gradually appear, moving to and forth in the current like synchronized swimmers. before disappearing back into the sand as you approach. It's not uncommon to see a dense swarm of barracudas patrolling the region on a daily basis. Ghost pipefishes are outstanding masters of disguise. In reality, they have some of the greatest disguises in water. Mind you, like the dudes playing a little trumpet or whatever and the pythons coming up and dancing to it and everything. That's what that <laughs> reminds Ranging you of. Ranging from eerie mimicry of leaves, crenoids, algae, sponges, and seagrass to sponges and seagrass. Some of these small critters are difficult to discover, but the hours spent scrutinizing everything that moves on the reef are well worth it. The variety of colors and body types might take even the most seasoned animal observer by surprise. Number a little aggressive little jokers too, aren't they? Number one, divers find possible pipe bombs. Oh, shit. Divers in the Chattahoochee River made a- See, that's another thing we gotta think about. Stuff like that being down there too, so you really gotta be careful. Unsettling. Leave it to the professionals, people. Unsettling find. When the divers discovered the pipe bombs, they were already in the water. Jeremy Sides and several buddies were diving in the Chattahoochee River near West Pace's Ferry when they came upon an ancient mortar and what seemed to be a pipe bomb. Homeland Security and park rangers also investigated. Officers shut down the bridge and seized the pipe bomb. Sides and Johnny Canone were diving in the same spot only a few weeks later when they discovered two additional pipe bombs. Soon the bomb squad arrived and got to work. The pipe bombs were confiscated by the police. The discovered mortar might have been from World War II, According to the divers, oh. it was taken to Dobbins Air Reserve, where military munition experts can examine it further. Did these strange discoveries make you want to take up deep sea diving? Absolutely not. Especially number one. You know what I'm saying? That, uh, whew, bro, my heart. <laughs> my heart couldn't take coming across that. And then these guys are experienced professionals, so they're able to recognize it. For most of us, being that it's been down there so long and it's covered with all kind of different things now and it's unrecognizable, you might not you might grab it and not know what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. Thank you. I'll chill right here on land. And and yeah, no, thank you. I'm good. 
<laughs> I'm good. But uh, shout out to them for their continued, continued discoveries, man. These things are very intriguing. You know, the ships that they found, the treasures that they found, the artifacts that they found, the new species that they found, like everything, bro, is just it's incredible. You know what I mean? Y'all get at me in the comment section, man, and let me know what you think. And uh, leave a like and share the video, man. And stick around and stay tuned. Till next one, I'm gone. Peace.